all in boxing. Sabalenka being crown champion. Once again, showing the world why he is the greatest. Left hook on the temple. Unbelievable. We start with a special showcase bout. It's an absolute monster of a lightweight. dizer alguma coisa que eu que eu acho que nunca disse. on the zone worldwide may 18th the fight of the century tyson fury versus alexander Usyk for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world tyson fury looks to reign as king of the division but alexander Usyk is undefeated and coming for the crown for the first time in over 20 years all the belts are on the line ring of fire live on the zone worldwide may 18th Here we go then, part one of an epic semi-final time. More winning is what Barcelona do. Chelsea take the lead. The semi-finals of the Women's Champions League. All right, all right, all right. We're going to see some fireworks tonight. Welcome to the National Football League draft. I can't wait to see how this plays out. It's time to get the show started. The zone is the global home of women's football. History is to be written in the women's game tonight. And now fans can watch for free. Enjoy the best live games from the world's top leagues. What a moment. Absolutely magnificent. All in one place to watch for free. Oh, it's got in. Fabulous finish. A new deal for women's football. Sign up now for free at DAZN.com.
Friday night action in the Google Pixel Frauen Bundesliga as Leipzig play host to Leverkusen. Both sides are set for a change of head coach in the summer. Zavon Uzun and Robert De Pau want to end their respective two-year tenures on a high note. And tonight, there are three more points on offer that could go towards achieving their respective season targets. But will Leipzig move a step closer to securing survival, or will Leverkusen edge further towards a club record points return? James Sorogat, your match commentator, as we raise the curtain on match day 19 in Germany's top flight with this clash at Kotterweg. We've got just four rounds of fixtures left in the current campaign. And it's fair to say we've had our fair share of thrills and spills. Time is of the essence and no one appears ready to rest on their laurels. And recent results in Journey's top flight have been about as predictable as the spring weather. But that's what makes this league so great. And it's a league that Leipzig want to be in again next season. When it comes to their survival chances, fate is in their own hands. Thanks to a very impressive Rook Runde. Based on the second half of the season alone, Leipzig would be sat fifth in the standings, which is perhaps a sign of where this side can go if they secure their top tier status for another season. They currently have a five point cushion above Nuremberg after a one or draw with Bremen last Friday. But it's fair to say they won't want to tempt fate and are backing themselves for another positive result on home soil, where they have won three straight. Saban Uzen was the man to guide them into the Frauen Bundesliga for the first ever time, and he wants to make sure they stay there before leaving in the summer. A look at the starting lineup and Saban Uzen making two changes compared to the one or draw with Bremen last Friday. Victoria Klug has recovered from a knock to the hip, but the same can't be said for Jenny Hip as she's replaced in midfield by Xander Starker. The other change sees Gianna Racco replaced by Lydia Andrade. On referee tonight, Naomi Breyer, backed up by Maria steinmann schultz And Paula Meyer, our fourth official, Monique Panetta. And now, just to take a look at Leverkusen's lineup, Robert De Pau also making two changes from last weekend's 2 0 win against Eintracht Frankfurt. And it's the two goal scorers that are awarded with a starting berth. Lorene Bender replaces Carolina Verhelmstottir after the Icelandic international was forced off with an ankle injury. Meanwhile, eight-goal top scorer Nikola Karczewska on loan from Tottenham starts up front for the first time since mid-February. Her ability to bully a backline could be key if Leipzig try to sit deep against uh, Leverkusen's side that will likely have more of the ball here tonight. Being honest, they would be happy with a fifth place finish this season, Leverkusen. That's where they're sat in the standings. They do have a chance tonight with a win to better last season's points tally. They also have a chance, Robert De Paul's charges, of breaking the club record, which was set back in the 2020 21 campaign when they amassed 33 points over the course of the 22 games that season. Right now, they are five points removed from that tally. Two wins in their last four games would see them Blake break the club record. They wouldn't mind putting three points on the board here against newly promoted Leipzig, who are impressing in their debut season, but are the clear underdogs even on home soil here today. to put to bed any lingering relegation fears. A healthy lead ahead of Nuremberg, who they do meet away from home next week. And ultimately, even if they lose here tonight, win that game against Nuremberg on match day 20. And that will secure their safety for another season as they'd have an eight point lead with just six points to play for. Robert De Pau in his side, they would like to put a little bit more pressure on the likes of Eintracht Frankfurt and Hoffenheim above them, while finishing the top three might be a distant dream. Unless miracles do happen, they would still like to play their part in determining the race for third place. And they did that last weekend with a 2-0 win against Eintracht Frankfurt, a very influential result. Tonight, they have a chance to close the gap as they raise the curtain on match day 19. 
Well, we're underway on Friday night here in the Google Pixel Frauen Bundesliga. Match day 19 underway. Leipzig looking to end any lingering relegation fears while Leverkusen want to apply more pressure on Frankfurt and Hoffenheim ahead of them. There are just four rounds of fixtures left in this compelling Google Pixel Frauen Bundesliga season. And tonight, three more precious points on offer. James Thorogood, your match commentator from Kotteweg. Leverkusen already settling into an early rhythm where they will look to dominate possession. Confidence high after that 2 0 win against Eintracht Frankfurt last time out. Robert de Pau, like his counterpart Zabon Uzen, set to leave in the summer after not having his contract extended. The club decided to seek a new path, in the words of sporting director Thomas Eichin. Two and two nil win against Frankfurt was a glimpse of what's possible for this team, even if they did have to rely on Eintracht's profligacy, a little bit of luck, and some magnificent goalkeeping from Federica Repol. Outside of the one or draw with Wolfsburg, you can say it was the most significant result for Robert de Pau in this Bayer Leverkusen side this season. place was the aim at the start of the campaign and when it was announced that Robert de Pau would be leaving he said that we're currently sat in fifth and that's where they want to remain at the very least he said the decision to not extend his contract changes nothing for him there is Lorene Bender lovely play seems we'll give chase and likely get there one-on-one -on -one with Julia Pollack Matashik pierces the lines to Stebel. She's going to shoot and it was destined for the far corner but plucked out of the air by Elvira Herzog. First sight of goal for either side and Sophie Stebel. Giving Elvira Herzog an early test. Lovely breakaway play there from Leverkusen, just lulling Leipzig into a spell of possession quickly going through the gears and now Kristen Kurgel with the advanced press causing problems Lorene Bender oh lovely back heel from Bender again Ziems cuts inside and back again Matashik with the support Ziems back to goal Find Stebel again now to Zenz Leipzig hold their ground in the early vertical dealt with by Emilia Brogstad. It was one of the big stories out of that 2 0 win against Eintracht Frankfurt. Marine Bender coming off the bench to replace the injured Carolina Verhalmstadt here. Forced off with an ankle injury. And just a few minutes after coming off the bench, she scored the opening goal against her former club. Her first ever Bundesliga goal, it's quite the story for the youngster who was crowned a European champion with Germany's under-17s a few years ago. Seen as a very bright talent. Many may be raising an eyebrow at the fact that Eintracht Frankfurt did let her go. Already we've seen exactly why she is held in such high regard here today. Some lovely outlet passes. Moments of ingenuity as well with the back heel. Throw into Leverkusen on the far side. Leverkusen two points shy of matching last season's points tally. Five have drifted their best ever haul from the 2020-21 campaign when they picked up 33 points on the back of 10 wins and three draws. This season, the volume of wins has slightly reduced, but the number of defeats has been 
significantly taken down. Just four losses all campaign for Leverkusen. Losses for Leverkusen, Wolfsburg, Bayern. Games that they're expected to lose. The surprise defeats. We're away from home against Werder Bremen. And then on home soil against Hoffenheim. A game where they did take the lead as well. And if their ambition is to be a top three side sometime in the near future, you can take a look at their results against Eintracht Frankfurt as the ones that suggest that they are capable of that if they can find the consistency against the teams in the bottom half of the table. It's away from home, they picked up a two-all draw on home soil last time out, a 2-0 win. Lorene Bender got the opener, as we've mentioned. Nikola Karczewska came off the bench to provide an opportunistic second after a bit of a mix-up at the back by Frankfurt and Verena Hanschor and Stine Johannes. But Karczewska sensed the opportunity, pounced on the opportunity, got her eighth goal of the season. In the Frauen Bundesliga, top goal scorer for Bayern 04. And it's fair to say Bayer Leverkusen as a club as a whole are very much enjoying life right now. And while the women's team can't quite match the heights of the men's, and I hold the thought because Vidal is looking for Larsen here, Janu Levels doing some defending and did Larsen get there ahead of Raypol? Well, Larsen keeps playing on. Battling away but being forced in the wrong direction. Still the ball goes backwards for Leipzig having just been in the box with a half shot at a penalty appeal there. Really had to retreat their lines. Steffel loses out against Starke Barbara Brecht. Advantage played. Advantage comes to nothing as Zentz intercepts. Elisa Zentz, who will be leaving Leverkusen to join Eintracht Frankfurt in the summer. I think she would have been anticipating joining a side that would be finishing in the Champions League qualification spots. And right now, that is not guaranteed. Hoffenheim boasting a two-point lead against the Sheagles. Take a look at that again, and Larson really did seem to be going to ground before Raypol even made the contact there. And that might have been what worked against her. Had she actually drawn the contact properly, which... That probably would have been enough. Paul, that wasn't the most convincing piece of goalkeeping we've seen from the former Wolfsburg goalkeeper, who, let's be honest, has been in fine form recently. Four by Leverkusen. Four straight clean sheets. Before the start of play, 375 minutes without conceding for Friederike Raypold and Leverkusen. We'll see where the Leipzig can break that impressive defensive record. a little bit in that one or draw with Werder Bremen last weekend. A game where Leipzig certainly were second best in many regards, but will be happy to have taken a point, a precious point for them in the context of their campaign as they can count it as a bit of a lucky escape. They only had expected goals of 0.2, but it was an effort from Barbara Brecht on her 50th appearance for the club that separated the sides at half-time. Bremen, though, came on much stronger in the second half and 
finally found a finishing touch in front of goal, thanks to Sophie Weidauer. So Bremen were relieved to get a point when actually they probably could have taken all three had they been more clinical. And Leipzig will please just to move a little bit further clear of Nuremberg, now five points above the drop zone. So even if they don't get a positive result here today, fate is in their own hands. I think that all they have to do is beat Nuremberg on match day 20 at the Max Morlock Stadion. And that really should be enough to secure their top tier status for a second season in club history. But a debut season that certainly laid some building blocks that they can work with moving forward. Luca Graf is one of them. She's just this week signed a contract extension until 2026, linking up the play here, but giving the ball away at the vital moment. Zeems, that was a nice ball to break the lines, but given away cheaply by Bender. Fadala thought about the early strike, and Matashik did just enough to make her second guess her decision there, Vanessa Fadala. Five goals in her last seven league games. See that the rain is coming down quite heavily. Marlena Muller. Little one two, Marlena Muller. Tarani. Looking for the no-nonsense clearance, but straight to Garth. And now all of a sudden, this is a little spell of pressure for Leipzig. Leverkusen with the brighter start here. Leipzig have fended off their early forays forward, and now fancy turning the screw a bit themselves. up against Barbara Brecht. The opening goal against Bremen, her first of the season. I didn't quite get to finish earlier about Bayer Leverkusen is that while the women's team can't quite match the heights that the men's team are hitting this season, they've already won the Bundesliga with a couple of games to spare, ending Bayern's spell of 11 years of dominance when it comes to winning the title. The men's team also on course for potential treble as well and unbeaten in 44 games in all competitions, which has set a New record for a European side from Europe's top five leagues. Got to think that that positivity is certainly going to have a trickle down effect to the women's team as well. You never know the increased coffers due to the men's team's success could also lead to a bit more investment in the women's team. But while they won't quite have the title winning success of their male counterparts, the progress is nevertheless deniable, uh, excuse me, undeniable within this Leverkusen side. The problem for Robert De Paul in his second season, there wasn't quite enough progress to convince the club power brokers that he was the man to continue taking this Leverkusen side forward. Instead, they have just said that they want to take a new path, according to sporting director Thomas Aikin. Praised De Paul for being actively committed and doing a great job and ultimately forging a successful path but they do feel like a fresh outlook on the hot seat might benefit them next season so in losing Robert De Pau and Elisa Zenz it will be a period of transition in the summer though there has been positive news because Leverkusen this week announcing the signing of Katarina Piljic from Essen the young 20 year old central midfielder who is certainly a very promising prospect in that position, 79 appearances and three goals at just 20 years of age for the Frauen Bundesliga's only remaining pure women's team. 
she is an Essen native, Pilic, and said she wanted to step away from her hometown and fancied the more professional setup at Leverkusen and wants to ultimately, in her career, reach as high as possible. She is on a trajectory that suggests that she'll end up at a club bigger than Leverkusen in the future. But certainly a nice step between Essen and that next big team, perhaps, for Piljic. And Leverkusen is certainly proving a place where players can come here and develop their skills. Ooh, that's not a good outlet pass from the back. And, well, Emilia Brogstad there. Sparing the blushes of her centre-back partner, Lilla Taranyi. Right now, Leipzig have the bit between their teeth. Leverkusen can't find an outlet from the back to alleviate the pressure, really. But Leipzig need to make this count. Kodala, the latest to win the ball back, finding Pollack. Not really the option she was looking for down the wing. But again, the clearance straight to a Leipzig player. Leverkusen on this occasion fortunate that Sandra Starker's first touch led her down there. Leipzig, their home form certainly been very impressive. Three wins in a row, 13 of their 17 points have been picked up here at Kotovig this season. Those three home wins coming against Duisburg and Köln, teams direct competitors in the relegation battle and impressive results. The most impressive though was the 2-1 win against Eintracht Frankfurt. Janu Levels trying to burst to the byline for Leverkusen and oh, deflected dangerously and flashes across the face of goal. But I have a feeling Elvira Herzog's heart might have just bounced up into her mouth for a moment there. Now yeah, I've got a corner for their efforts, Leverkusen. And after this spell of Leipzig pressure, this is maybe the perfect way for the visitors to alleviate it if they could fashion a chance from. This set piece situation. Christian Kurgel to take. Floated in towards that near post. And then Bender's control lets her down. And so we're already we've seen the Glimpse of, of potential, but also why Lorene Bender is still very much a young, unproven prospect at the age of 18. Wealth of experience at international level in the German youth teams. A European champion with Germany's under 17s and also a third place finisher with the same team. Under 17 World Cup, where she actually scored one of the, if not the best goal of the tournament, was voted as the Sportschau goal of the month here in Germany. It was scored in the third place playoff against Nigeria. If you haven't seen it, it is readily available online. Quick Google search. all you need and here she is on the ball Lorene Bender bursting her way through and did she get taken down at the vital moment well there was contact the question is whether it was enough really for Naomi Breyer to point to the spot and she felt there wasn't enough Bender almost wreaking havoc solo there now Leipzig look to respond down the other end Mimi Larson. Thought better of the early delivery. She ends up playing Marlena Muller into a bit of pressure. Brecht tries to help out.
both sides enjoying extended spells of possession. Look at the way Leipzig moved this ball about and it does underline their ambition to ultimately be competing higher up the Frauen Bundesliga table than their ninth place standing right now suggests. This is ultimately their debut campaign. So survival was the ultimate priority. You look at their form in the second half of the season. And it does suggest that they are putting the pieces in place to match their ambitions higher up the standings. interviews with some of the players, Vanessa Fadala, Jenny Hitt, Victoria Krug, the key figures in the Leipzig ranks. And they all talked about coming up into the Frauen Bundesliga and not really knowing where they'd stand and it all being a learning process. In the first half of the season, I think they realized just how steep the learning curve was going to be. But if they went back to the drawing board during the winter break, Really came out strong in 2024. Only picked up six points in the first half of the season already. They've doubled that tally. If you include the point they're on course for tonight, as it would be their 12th point in the Rückrunde. And only Leverkusen, Wolfsburg, Hoffenheim and Bayern, teams that can boast a better output in that regard. last seven games in the Frauen Bundesliga Leipzig and they've only suffered two losses and those two losses came against Wolfsburg and Bayern in back-to-back -back games uh, look at that again and it's clear contact from Starker and there's an element where she does put leg across Lorene Bender's body I think it would have been a very soft decision had it gone Leverkusen's way. I think Bender, those are the types of moments where she could have actually made it more convincing by trying to stay on her feet. And had she tried to stay on her feet and then gone to ground, Nimi Bayer, the referee, might have considered blowing her whistle. But in the end, I think Bayer looked at that situation and thought that Bender probably should have been more physically strong in the challenge and that Sandra Starker shouldn't just be penalized for being a bigger physical presence there from Nikola Karczewska after taking out one of the sideline photographers. In case of wrong place, wrong time, but then ultimately he should be watching the match if he's sitting back there. He had his jacket over his face as he was just checking out some of the photos he'd just taken. Now he's got the camera out again for this corner. Kurgle floating it in this time, bouncing dangerously, Karczewska. Oh, it almost dropped kindly for her. Brugstad making a nuisance off herself, and Kurgle will have a chance to put it back into the mix here. Set us for the corner. Nochmal is the call there from Christian Kurgle. We go again. Maybe a routine. The training ground. She certainly put a bit more depth on that second corner than she did the first. Maybe Breyer not happy with the jostling in the six yard box.
Right in the mix, oh, Taranyi. Unmarked, two yards out, and heads over. What well, questions will be asked as to how Taranyi was so free in such a dangerous area. I don't know where Elvira Herzog was in the mix there, but she was nowhere close to the ball. And that should have been 1-0 to Leverkusen. Taranyi's has only scored once this season. not want to watch that chance back. She might not realise just how good it was. And I think that can certainly be categorised under the golden opportunity variety when it comes to goal scoring chances that we're going to see here today. I'm not necessarily sure we're going to see many better than that actually. Kirkle's corner was inch perfect in many regards. Leipzig survived the scare and looked to respond in kind. Challenge there from Tirani, skips off the wet turf here in Kotovig. Certainly didn't need the pre-match sprinklers today with the rain falling not too heavily but consistently at the very least. Zabaduzan. After the one or draw against Werder Bremen, described it as a tense game, said that both teams struggled to find solutions in the final third. In many regards, this is playing out the same way, though the attacking quality from both sides has been better through 28 minutes than we had through 90 in Bremen last Friday, as Andraj does well to ride the challenge. Seems to have got hurt in the mix, but the play goes on here. Leipzig looking dangerous. Long ball into the box, that's going to float behind Federica Reipol's goal. Sliced off the foot of Barbara Brecht. Oh, lovely touch from Kurgle. those players that has become a face of this by Leverkusen's side. Fresh from signing a contract extension till 2026, said that she wants to build on the fact that she has established herself at the Bundesliga level in the last four years with Leverkusen. She's not the only one to commit her future to the club either. Friederike Raypol did the same. Uh, contract was due to expire in the summer, but signs on for another two years. She's been so key to their success in the current campaign and the progress they've made, and that's what she alluded to when she said that Leverkusen have improved year on year since she's been at the club when she joined in 2021 from Wolfsburg. Feels like the club are on a great path. And that says a lot for someone that's coming from the Wolfsburg ranks, given the titles that she won with the She-Wolves. Displaced by men of forms. Scrappy in midfield, but it's Leverkusen to come away with it. Ziems has made a great run, found by Bender. Carolina Ziems looking for the bottom corner, and it's Herzog with a fine save. Karczewska keeping the chance alive along with Justin Kurgel. Now Labels will flash a ball into the box, and Ziems sees the ball just squirm under her foot. Carolina Ziems, who missed a golden opportunity against Eintracht Frankfurt last weekend in the 2-0 win. That was a great effort, it has to be said, and it draws a sharp stop out of Alvira Herzog, who had to get low to her right and actually does well to turn it away from danger, as opposed to leaving the ball at the feet of Nikola Karczewska on the follow-up there. 
between Lila Tarani's header and that chance for Carolina Zeems. Leverkusen with the best two chances of the game so far. And you could argue should be ahead on the scoreline. Let's go Leipzig fight and win is the chant from the home crowd. They have had not a lot to cheer about so far. One half chance, Mylena Muller saw a shot block from the edge of the area. Otherwise, nothing to speak of in the final third for Leipzig. We see the match statistics just to underline that fact. Leverkusen will certainly be happy we happy uh, with their opening gambit here tonight. The challenge is one statistic there, slightly edged by Leipzig, does prove just how hard fought the opening half an hour and change has been here. Leipzig might not be producing the same level of attacking output as Leverkusen. Can't say they're giving a poor account of themselves here. Getting stuck in. Leverkusen having to work hard for their goal scoring chances. Hold up play there from Papa Brecht, but she threatened to give the ball away. Leverkusen were just as complacent in possession on that occasion. And that's where Leipzig are just letting themselves down here tonight. They're getting into some very promising positions, but the end product, the final decisive pass that could really damage. Leverkusen and caused them problems, just isn't forthcoming so far. Vanessa Fadala, congested central area, forces the ball out wide. Brecht challenges in the air, certainly wasn't going to get a penalty for that aerial duel. And it's Janu Levels who comes away with the ball for Leverkusen. Almost ran herself down a dark and dangerous corridor, but they've worked it well here. And now Lorene Bender linking up the play again, wants it back from Seams doesn't get it and seems forced backwards but does well to retain possession to always put her left shin pad on first before a game. One of those pre-match rituals that sticks with players sometimes. Four goals this season, matching her output from the previous campaign, so she could better that with another effort. Here's Sophie Stebel linking up with Bender. This is dangerous, Bender. Can she pick out a teammate? The answer is no. Stebel. Back into the mix, repelled by Landenberger. Matisic trying to keep Leverkusen on the front foot, but fails to do so. And then Larsen losing out to Zensen. Penalised for the foul. And rightly so. In some ways, I think the foul was probably the better avenue there for Larsen because had she lost out to Zens and allowed Zens to turn towards goal again, Leverkusen could have really posed a threat. That Gagan press is certainly, or counter press in English. Nevertheless, I think Gagan press is certainly a 
accepted piece of the football vocabulary nowadays. Nevertheless, the counter press from Leverkusen is certainly having a lot of joy. Free kick, not quite as much. Seems sees the flag go up against her. Continues to get a little bit fiercer with every passing challenge in midfield. Right now, Sophie Stebel, Elisa Zentz probably getting the better of the midfield battle in conjunction with the likes of Christine Kirkle, who are certainly chipping in, and Lorene Bender. Sandra Starker, Luca Graf, Barbara Brecht. Not quite winning out for the home team. Juice from this free kick. Kristen Kurgel, Elisa Zentz eyeing it up, and Zentz fancies her chances but sends it wide. Well, she's only scored one goal in her by Leverkusen career. The captain, Elisa Zentz, came in a 3 0 win against Tobina Potsdam in December of 2022. One game all season, Elisa Zentz. In a year that certainly will live long in her memory, or a season that would live long in her memory, as Karczewska making her physical presence felt there. Loses out against Victoria Krug, though. And Muller with a nice outlet pass to feet for Fadala, who well, I'm not sure she was fouled there, but she gets the whistle to go her way. Comes to this season for Elisa Zent. Built on her fine progress with Bayer Leverkusen, called up to the German national team for the first time in her career, becoming the first ever Bayer Leverkusen player to feature for Germany's senior squad. And certainly in with a chance of featuring at the Olympics, though competition for places is fierce. With every team only allowed to name 18 players in their respective squads. Zen certainly has a lot of competition for places in midfield. So you've got to think of her as a bit of a dark horse to feature in the Olympic squads, though it would be difficult to argue against her deserving her place. set to join Eintracht Frankfurt in the summer. Said that she's had a great time at Leverkusen, but her aim is to play internationally and challenge for titles with Eintracht Frankfurt. It might not be the case the way things currently stand, that there is time for a few more permutations in the race for third place. Hoffenheim have the two-point advantage right now. It could have been four. So the fact that they dropped points against Köln on Monday night. Elisa Zentz, though, will be an interested onlooker when Frankfurt and Hoffenheim meet on match day 20. It could be the game that decides who finishes in third place. And whether or not she'll be moving to a club that are qualified for the Champions League or not. Given the impact Eintracht made in the Women's Champions League this season, though, it would be a shame not to see them try and follow that up in the coming campaign. But they have gone off the boil in the second half of the season. Hoffenheim have stolen a march on them. And the 2-0 loss to Leverkusen last weekend. Adding to a disappointing second half of the season.
And as a result, actually, I mean, if you think about it, Leverkusen, their aim this season was to finish fifth. But given the fact that either Hoffenheim or Frankfurt, or both, will drop points on match day 20, there is a chance, and a slim chance, that Leverkusen could even finish as high as fourth this season. We shouldn't forget, of course, that they do have to face Bayern München on home soil next time out on match day 20 themselves. So there's a good chance they might drop points too, if we're honest. Fifth place would certainly be a good result for them at the end of this season. They can dare to dream, perhaps. Mentioned the fact that Leipzig, though, aren't here on home soil in fine form, three straight wins. Leverkusen's away form doesn't offer a lot of hope. They've picked up just one win in their last six. That came against Nuremberg, the side second from bottom. One of only two wins they've picked up on their travels all season by Anulfia. The other coming against Köln. well against Entrage. to Levels. Trying to take on Marlena Muller for pace. That's not an easy thing to do against Marlena Muller. And that's wonderful defending by the makeshift right back. She's a winger by trade, Marlena Muller, often in a more advanced role. But given the injury issues that Leipzig are facing right now, especially in their back line, they've got players out injured, players not at 100%. She is filling in at right back for Friederike Kemper and Josefina Schallert, who has been out for the whole entire season after tearing knee ligaments in pre-season. Marlena Muller there showing the fact that she can be quite a nifty defender as well as someone that makes an impact going forward. Again, it's one of those moments and that has been the story of this first half for Leverkusen not quite putting the finishing touches on their best moves today. They've had the best opportunity, Sophie Stebel with a shot from the edge of the area. They tested Elvira Herzog in the third minute of the game. In the 26th minute, Taranyi with that unmarked header from inside the six-yard box from a Leverkusen corner. That should have been the opener. And then Carolina Zims cleaned her own goal just past the half-hour mark. Once again, tested Herzog, who did well to claw the ball out from her bottom corner. Leverkusen will go in at the half, feeling that they should be in front here. And Robert De Pau will be pleased with elements of his size performance, but might be lamenting their profligacy in front of goal. So Victoria Klug there picking up the first yellow card of the game, coming through the back of Nikola Karczewska. there just doing really well to draw the contact anticipating the challenge Krug not one of the Leipzig players that's uh, booking away from suspension those are Sandra Starker and Lydia Andraj the two changes in the starting lineup neither will want to get a booking ahead of that match day 20 fixture against Nuremberg any points tonight will be seen as a bonus that win or that game against Nuremberg is the must-win match. But here at Kotteweg, we're stuck at a stalemate through 45 minutes. Robert de Pau has seen his Leverkusen side fashion more chances and the better chances on the road. But they have not rewarded themselves with the opening goal. And as a result, we are deadlocked at 0-0 between Leipzig and Leverkusen here at Kotteweg.
Uh, Zabon Uzan has seen his side produce a performance so far that is very similar to the one we saw in the one or draw against Werder Bremen last Friday. The difference is that they haven't found that lucky punch that Barbara Brecht supplied on that occasion. And they've had just one shot on goal, which is a blocked effort from outside the area. Friederike Reipold is currently 420 minutes and counting without conceding. Uh, there's been an onlooker for the most part in this first half. And Robert Depau, I'm sure, will be pleased that his side have been more dominant, that they have quelled the threat that Leipzig do possess in their attacking ranks, but will be disappointed that they haven't got the goal themselves. Sophie Stebel, Carolina Zims, with shots from the edge of the area that were saved by Elvira Herzog. Lila Tarani, though, with the best chance of the first half. An unmarked header from about two yards out from a Leverkusen corner. Should have been turned home just before the half-hour mark, but it wasn't. And that was the story of the first half for Leverkusen. For now, I will leave you with the half-time statistics and the first half highlights. The score at the break is Leipzig nil, Leverkusen nil. The zone is the global home of women's football. History is to be written in the women's game tonight. Enjoy the best live games from the world's top leagues. A new deal for women's football. Sign up now for free at DAZN.com. Live on DAZN Worldwide, April 20th, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. Two generational talents, the world at their feet. It's time for me to show the world how great I really am. A world championship is on the line. This is the year I shocked the world, but only one can wear the crown. Let's make the fight happen now. This is a grudge match. This one counts. Live on The Zone Worldwide, April 20th. Buy now at DACN.com. All right, all right, all right. We're going to see some fireworks tonight. Welcome to the National Football League Draft. I can't wait to see how this plays out. It's time to get the show started. I know why you're here. You're a born winner, the top dog. You have a proper punch on you. It only takes one, eh? But I know you're not all about throwing haymakers. You know your bobs from your wheeze, and you know the zone's got over 100 live events every year. Over 100, proper stack. All the action, the chaos, the comeback, the non-stop knockout, big fights every week. So get those gloves back on. Together, we're boxing royalty. The zone, undisputed. Lauren, you've enjoyed a sensational season for Chelsea so far. What do you put that success down to? Probably comfort and consistency. Um, and yeah, just enjoying myself. And Chelsea will come again here with Lauren James. Nice bit of skill. And a lovely cross too. That's a superb goal. What about that for an assist from Lauren James? Few players in the game. Would have even saw that that was on. I've always growing up, I wanted to do football. Always? Yeah, it's like all I've known. And that is exactly what Laura James can do. Unbelievable. Just remember growing up watching Hazard and love watching him. Emma Hayes said you have a talent that you can't teach. How much of an influence has she had professionally and personally? I think just the fact she understands me, it allows me to be myself.
People are calling it the crisis of our time. A record heat wave in Japan, major flooding in Australia, and a deadly avalanche in northern Italy. The facts are crystal clear. Climate change is real. Sport does not exist in a bubble. This is a climate emergency. Climate scientists warn that we are already perilously close to tipping points that could lead to cascading and irreversible climate impacts. It makes no difference if you're a weekend warrior or the heavyweight champion of the world. If the planet is facing challenges, those challenges will affect sport. We have a really young team, but we have so much quality in the team, but we don't have to forget the people that have always worked really hard for, uh, for Ajax, also the people in the past, you know. And that's why we can stand on this, uh, yeah, this stance. I'm the oldest one, but uh, I feel uh, really young, so that is, uh, that's nice. I am there for, uh, for my teammates. If there is there's something, I always want to win the games. Um, so that kind of spirit, I hope that I can bring that to the, to the other girls. And that, is, and that we all do that together. And that is really nice. That we are playing in the Johan, Johan Cruyff Arena now and with, for so many people. Yeah, that is really nice. And the people that are really young now, uh, I didn't have that when I was that age, you know. And yeah, I'm really proud of the girls, how we achieved that, but we want to have more. Odio che ci ammazziamo, ci un legato. Sei più preoccupata o eccitata? al pensiero di giocare in gruppo così difficile alla Women's Champions League. Sì, quando è uscito il girone eravamo un po' preoccupate, però ci siamo guardate e ci siamo dette che siamo una squadra forte e che vogliamo dimostrare il nostro, il nostro valore in campo internazionale. Qual è attualmente la tua canzone preferita? La possiamo cantare insieme? Sì, se la conosci, Alba Chiara, di Vasco Rossi. Non la conosci? Lui sì, però la canzone. Allora non la cantiamo. È meglio per tutti. <ride> Chi è la persona più famosa tra i contatti del tuo telefono? Puoi chiamarla? Paolo Maldini, però non lo chiamerei adesso. Liverpool was red hot all season, winning its first eight games. And when the Reds beat City at Anfield 3-0 on November 10, 2019, Liverpool was on its way to a long-awaited premiership, and just before COVID hit, Pep Guardiola conceded the title. No, no, the, the, the cap is what it is. So they, they deserve so far, no doubt about this, the position that they have. They lost one game, they draw another one. So it's because they deserve to be there. The Reds were superb all season, winning the title with a record seven games left had the biggest points lead in history of 25, tied the record for 18 straight wins, and most wins with 32. It was Liverpool's 19th title, but first in 30 years. So much for social distancing. We've seen some of the most beautiful moments in, in all, all of time in football, you know, uh, in sport. So I think that having the representation and the drive for equality, I think that it could be a massive, massive influence on society. And I think as society changes, sport goes alongside that. And if we can push it on, um, we're ahead of the game in most things when it comes to, to pushing. And I think it's because in sport, we're exposed to all walks of life. And, you know, in my team, you'll have people come from everywhere, all different financial situations, uh, sexual orientation, you know, where they come from in the world and I think that that's the beauty of sport and why we're maybe so open to to pushing for change really and changing in in the forward direction so to speak so yeah if we can influence on society then I think that that's a massive bonus for us and I think it's something we're all aware of. I was fortunate enough tonight to break the world's record first with the leap of 25 feet seven and one quarter inches and last with a leap of 25 feet nine inches, realizing some of my ambitions. 
the propaganda that the Nazi party wanted to put forward, which was centered in the idea that uh, the, the Aryan race would perform in a superior way in those Olympics. Jesse Owens broke that, uh, that myth right at the start, uh, capturing four gold medals in the Olympics and dominating track and field competition. It wasn't just Jesse, it was other African-American athletes in the middle of Nazi Germany under the gaze of Adolf Hitler that put a lie to notions of racial superiority, whooped them, and <laughs> taught them a thing or two about democracy. Live on the Zone Worldwide, May 18th. The fight of the century. Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Tyson Fury looks to reign as king of the division. But Alexander Usyk is undefeated and coming for the crown. For the first time in over 20 years, all the belts are on the line. Ring of Fire, live on the Zone Worldwide, May 18th. Well, here we go then. Part one of an epic semi-final time. More winning is what Barcelona do. Chelsea take the lead. The semi-finals of the Women's Champions League. All right, all right, all right. We're going to see some fireworks tonight. Welcome to the National Football League draft. I can't wait to see how this plays out. It's time to get the show started. DAZN is the global home of women's football. History is to be written in the women's game tonight. And now fans can watch for free. Enjoy the best live games from the world's top leagues. What a moment. Absolutely magnificent. All in one place to watch for free. Oh, it's gone in. Fabulous finish. A new deal for women's football. Sign up now for free at DAZN.com. Hello and welcome back everyone to Kotovig in Leipzig tonight playing host to the first encounter on match day 19 in the Google Pixel Frauen Bundesliga. Four rounds of fixtures remain in what has been a compelling campaign across the board, top to bottom. And while the title race may be run, there are still possible permutations elsewhere in the standings and those involve the two teams that we've got on show tonight Leipzig against Leverkusen. A first half where Leverkusen will have been the more disappointed not to have rewarded themselves with an opening goal that you could argue they deserved. The much better chances, the greater volume of chances. Leipzig reduced to just one half chance themselves. A block shot from outside the area. And as a result, Zabon Uzen has made two changes at half time that I can tell you about. We saw Lara Marti there. The former Leverkusen player who left Leverkusen in the winter to join Leipzig. She's coming on at half time to replace Julia Polak at left back. And there is Gianna Rakow. She's the other player coming on for Lydia Andrade, who, I have to say, fresh from being capped at international level for Switzerland for the first time, not her most impressive performance today, here tonight. The touches she did get in non threatening positions. Really managed to 
probe the Leverkusen back line with some of her weaving runs that we've become accustomed to seeing over the course of this season. And maybe the fresh impetus off the bench here for Zabon Uzun's Leipzig side with Gianna Rakow and Lara Marti can spring them into action in this second half. Because from Leipzig's perspective, the only way is up from here. A first half where they gave a good account of themselves defensively, but going forward had very little to show for their efforts in the first 45 minutes. Reminiscent of their one or draw against Bremen, the difference being that they didn't land a lucky punch in the first half like they did through Barber Brecht last Friday. Leverkusen with three chances of real noteworthiness, one for Sophie Stebel, a two-yard unmarked header from Lilla Tarani that really should have been the opener. That is the golden opportunity we've had so far. And then Carolina Zeems with the third effort that was well saved by Avira Herzog. But they want chances to fall to the likes of Nikola Karczewska here giving chase. Or Kristin Kirkel, Lareen Bender. Those are the players they haven't quite been able to get into the most dangerous position so far tonight, even if they have been influential in proceedings so far. You can make an argument as well that you can see that Leverkusen are missing Carolina Verhamstadt here tonight. Out with an ankle injury sustained in that win against Eintracht Frankfurt. And she is such a key creative hub. She might not be in her most glittering form of the season, the Icelandic international. But her influence is great on this Leverkusen side, the woman on loan from Bayern. Many looking at her form this season and wondering whether it's enough to break into the Bayern starting lineup. I think it's unlikely in all reality. And the question is, will she be happy to go back to Munich as a squad player that can help them in terms of their depth next season as they once again will look to attack three competitions? Or will Bayern once again look at a club like Leverkusen and fancy letting Verhamsatir go on loan again to gain more match practice? Because she's certainly benefited. Five goals, six assists. She was the first Frauen Bundesliga player to be named in the EAFC Team of the Week as well, in case you were wondering. Right now, Mimi Larsen, oh, lovely little nutmeg on Brugstad. Larsen can't find the pass to pick out a teammate. Leverkusen in the end. Hold their line as Fatala making a nuisance of herself against Carolina Zeems. Missing that chance in the 31st minute that could have handed Leverkusen the all-important opener. Missed a chance against Eintracht Frankfurt, but that was a game where it didn't come back to haunt her as Bayern Ulfier won 2-0. would be a cruel irony in many regards if Leverkusen win a game against Eintracht Frankfurt 2-0 and then come here to Kotterbeek and drop points. A time where they were looking to build on their most significant win of the season, but sometimes that can play in the minds of the players. And if we're honest, they rode their luck against Eintracht Frankfurt. They're not having to ride their luck here tonight, but it's difficult to match the output levels in terms of energy intensity in a game where the roles are distributed very differently. Leverkusen are not the underdogs here tonight. They are the favourites, even if they are on foreign soil. Unbeaten in four. Two wins, two draws. Their second longest unbeaten streak of the season after their club record breaking seven game run between match day two and match day eight when they picked up three wins and four draws. Three points today would see them better. Their season points tally from the previous campaign would move them to within two points of the club record in that regard as well, set in the 2020-21 campaign. That season under now sporting director Achim Feifel. He stepped down in 2022 after the club's regression. And that fifth place finish, they then finished seventh 
a season after. Robert De Powell then joined the club and guided them to a fifth place finish last season with 30 points. Fifth place is where they currently sit in the Frauen Bundesliga standings right now. Leverkusen with seven wins and seven draws. He wants to end his two year tenure on a high note, Robert De Powell. And the club record is there to be broken. Elisa Zentz with the corner. Dangerous! Off a Leipzig head and Fadala will complete the clearance with a bit of a risky outlet pass, but it's worked out well. The counter is on here for Leipzig. Brakow. She's got Fadala, Larsen, Graf, Muller streaming ahead of her. Look how many grey shirts have got behind the ball again, though, for Leverkusen. That's a nice ball in defeat for Graf. Nice idea to try and find Larsen. In the end, it was too crowded. You've got to give credit there for Leverkusen and the way they recovered their position. They will be well aware of the threat that Leipzig pose on the counter. Right now, Karczewska looking to work the channels, fed by Janu Levels. A one-on-one -on -one with Victoria Krug. Levels wants it back. Karczewska trying to take on Krug, but I think Krug was pretty privy to her intentions there. getting her first touches against her former club. The team she left in the winter. Having previously made 55 appearances and scoring just one goal, the Swiss international. The competition for places in wide positions in a back four or in the back line in general. Not as fierce in Leipzig as they were for her in Leverkusen. She was asked to describe herself in three words. She said, happy, loud and honest. It's quite a combination. But a very authentic three choices there from Lara Marti. She only featured for 49 minutes in the Leverkusen ranks this season. In two appearances before joining Leipzig, where despite a little injury setback in recent weeks. Has certainly made both the desired impact and an innocent one. Zims gives it away dangerously there, but Recht can't capitalise, and now Labels, oh, what a touch that is from Janu Labels. Marlene Muller sold. And Labels working between the lines now, finding Lorene Bender. Bender oh, forces Zims out wide. Cross force coming, but they have to slow down the play now, Leverkusen. Konczewska is an aerial threat, but she really is alone in that regard in Leverkusen's attacking ranks. Levels will give chase, but the angle against her on that cross from Sylvia Matasik. And that might be why Leverkusen are so reticent just to pump the ball into the box from wide positions. Yes, Konczewska is a target woman, but Leipzig... If they deal with that one target woman, really, are dealing with the threat that Leverkusen pose from those situations. And this is better. Levels. Oh. <laughs> well, both women slip at the same time, and then yet Muller did clip the heels there of Levels. So a fair decision from Naomi Bayer, our referee, and a free kick in a promising position here. Look at this again, eh? That was like there was timed, comedic timing there. And it is a slick surface, and the rain, I can tell you, has not stopped from the first whistle till now. And it's not torrential, but it's certainly consistent and persistent. This sense. Good shape on the ball into the box and a little Tarani with the headed effort, albeit not exactly a clear cut chance there for the visitors. Uh, she's 
never far away from making her physical presence felt, and she can bully a backline on a good day. But yeah, the arm was just at an awkward height there and then catches Landenberger on the chin. And I think in that regard, a yellow card is a fair decision. there from Elvira Herzog for not waiting for the referee's whistle. Now she gets it. I guess with Nikola Karczewska, the big question is whether she will maybe fancy staying at Leverkusen and whether Leverkusen have the resources to make her loan deal from Tottenham in the Women's Super League permanent. She's their top goal scorer with eight goals in 16 league appearances or 17, including tonight. 11 goals in all competitions, if you include the DFB Pokal der Frauen. Leverkusen just missing out on a semi-final berth for the third time in club history. 2-1 loss to Essen in the quarter-finals. Karczewska certainly has a part to play in this Leverkusen setup, And I guess it might hinge on whether the incoming head coach in the summer fancies her talents in that lone striker role as a target woman, someone that is proficient with her back to goal, but I tell you what, she's got the technical ability with ball to feet as well and a fine finish on her too, as we've seen at times this season. Brockstad and Larson tangling again, a little bit of a Scan Scandinavian showdown between those two. They're just trying to pick the pocket of Elisa Zenz. They sense the chance to apply the pressure, and it almost worked out for them, but Leverkusen have alleviated the pressure well, as I say that. Disappointing. That was building to a promising attack, and Kurgel just not maintaining the discipline at the necessary time to prevent herself from breaching beyond the Leipzig back line. Let's go Leipzig, fight and win is the chant. The fight is there. There's no doubt about that. That's something that we have rarely not seen from this Leipzig side in their debut for our Bundesliga season. The intensity, the energy levels, the desire, the determination to try and equip themselves at this level and ultimately establish themselves at this level has always been there throughout this season. They've had a couple of results earlier in the campaign where they were unlucky not to take all three points. And one of those games was the match day eight meeting between these two teams because Leipzig led late on in that game through Vanessa for Dala. Again, it was a game where both sides cancelled each other out for the most part. Very much like we're seeing tonight. Vanessa for Dala had to wait until the 78th minute to open the scoring on that occasion. And just when it looked like Leipzig were going to take all three points in a, what would have been a big win for them, it was Verena Vida in the 93rd minute that popped up with an overhead kick to spare Leverkusen's plushes and deny Leipzig an impressive win on foreign soil. And in many regards, this game is playing out in almost the exact same way. Leverkusen with the better chances. Leipzig looking for that lucky punch. themselves into a bit of 
trouble there, the home team. Vera Herzog, the Leipzig goalkeeper, has acquitted herself well tonight, but she is certainly a woman who is prone to the odd mistake here or there. Kirgel with the ball into the box for Dala, doing the defending. I think it's fair to say the rain is definitely getting a little heavier now in this second half. Might just be the effect of the floodlights and the fact that we can see it a bit better. Credit to the fans that have shown up at Kotovig, though, on this Friday night under the floodlights. An hour played, a game in many regards being played auf Augenhöhe, as they would say here in Germany, at eye level. Essentially, an evenly matched encounter. Leverkusen edging it in terms of the attacking output. They just don't have anything to show for it on the scoreline. or just over. I talked about the fact that you could see that Leverkusen were missing Karolina Verhamstottir. We're hearing that she is going to be coming off the bench any moment now to maybe be that bright spark for Leverkusen in the closing stages at Kotovig. Could she be the person that proves the missing piece of the puzzle tonight in the final third? I guess the question then is how fit is she? How much is that ankle still affected by the injury suffered against Eintracht Frankfurt? Is she coming off the bench and playing through the pain? Oh. Red for a forward here from Leipzig. I think it's the offside flag that stopped Barbara Brecht in her tracks there. We see the Helms dot here. Coming on for Lorene Bender, which is a little surprising given Bender's impressive performance here today. Some really bright moments in the first half in terms of her link up play, both with her passing, her ingenuity, and then also just her running and drive as well. She was able to break the lines. Creating chances for her teammates as well. And maybe a little unlucky to be forced off early here. Not an easy decision though for Robert De Pau. Do you take off Kristin Kirkle, who is just as impressive, or Lorene Bender? Karczewska, you need that pivot point up front that he's talked about. De Pau referring to the Polish striker as someone that provides stability as an anchor point for Leverkusen. As we see what might go down as Leipzig's only second shot of the game there that again was easily blocked by the Leverkusen backline and now Verhamstottir first touches on the stretch loses out Leverkusen lose out in the throw in stakes as well Kachevska and Landenberger they've been going at each other all evening Berger on loan from Bayern's reserves team and again a player that I think wants Leipzig to secure their safety officially because in many people's opinions they are all but safe really it doesn't look like Nuremberg are going to have enough in them in their final four games to close a five-point gap on Leipzig which you never know with Nuremberg in action away from home against Eintracht Frankfurt tomorrow afternoon a point here tonight would be enough to move six points clear and it might stay that way as Nuremberg's prospects of taking any points off of Frankfurt are diminished as we expect Frankfurt to produce a pretty stark response to the 2-0 loss they suffered to Leverkusen last time out Free kick, set-piece opportunity for the home team. The 
defended in the end by Tiranyi. For Dada, though, first of the loose ball. Poor clearance from Leverkusen, not alleviating the danger. It almost dropped there for Barbara Brecht. She was battling against two, never easy. It's now Repol, who is still yet to make a save tonight. Sees the ball go behind for a goal kick. Reminder, she's picked up four clean sheets in a row in her last four league games, Friederica Raypol. She's had her part to play in those clean sheets as well. So many impressive saves. Think of the one to deny Marlene Schimmer and the Line Derby in a 2-0 win for Leverkusen against Köln, clawing an effort out of the top corner. There were some big saves last weekend against Eintracht Frankfurt, though, when she was beaten. Frankfurt either fired wide or hit the post, and now Stebel, this is a great chance. Cross blocked and behind for a corner. I think they're asking for a handball there, the Leverkusen players, which I think they would have been very lucky to get. There was nothing really to suggest. There was a handball in the mix there from Victoria Krug, who got down well to block the cross from Stebel. Yeah, I think that would have been incredibly hard. Even if there was contact with her arm, it would have been incredibly hard there on Leipzig. The referees don't give handballs when the hand is going to ground in a challenge like that. So they have to set up for the corner here, Leverkusen. Right into the front post, Herzog unconvincing and Behamtotir on the follow-up, couldn't quite thread the ball through the bodies. Kurgle now with another chance to cross. It's a good ball in as well. Behamtotir can't make it work though for Leverkusen. And now the counter may be on for Leipzig. Lovely first touch and a pass now for Mimi Larsen to give chase. Oh, just lost the foot race. Vital challenge from Nevels. Rakow though. Well defended by Elisa Zentz. Composed, commanding presence in nullifying the threat there. The Leverkusen captain. She was voted as the Leverkusen player of the year last season. Elisa Zentz and will fall just short of making 50 appearances in all competitions for Leverkusen before she joins Eintracht Frankfurt in the summer, having only joined Leverkusen in 2022 from SKS Essen. She was a key player for Essen, an even more important player for Leverkusen. And unsurprisingly, Essen was again where Leverkusen dipped into the market to replace Elisa Zentz. As mentioned in the first half, Katharina Piljic will be joining in the summer, the 20-year-old central midfielder. Leverkusen substitutes there, not happy with the fact that the thrower didn't go their way. And it's going to be Cecilia Johansson and Verena Vida entering the fray. Johansson with a, another of her appearances off the bench in what is her first season with Leverkusen, Mima Verena Vida, she was the woman that scored the late equaliser for Leverkusen in the one or draw with Leipzig on match day eight. But she maybe come off the bench and score a late winner this time around as she replaces Nikola Karczewska, who didn't have a single chance to add to her eight goal tally in front of goal this season. So credit to Leipzig for keeping Karczewska quiet, maybe Verena Vida can have a little bit more joy up front. Sylvia Matashik has gone down and stayed down here. She had a couple of niggly injuries. There was one really nasty ankle injury she suffered earlier this season where she made a remarkably quick recovery from it. It's the type of ankle turn that ruled players out for an entire season. She was back after a couple of games and in the starting lineup, and no noticeable drop off whatsoever. She's such a key defender, the pole, Sylvia Matashik. 
Says her favourite book is that of Mamba Mentality by Kobe Bryant. And she has a little bit of that mentality about her game as well, it's fair to say. Leverkusen need to dip into that type of mentality if they are going to get the win here because they're the side that are without question more deserving of the win. 20 minutes of normal time remaining. Leipzig still credited on the statistic sheet with just one shot on goal from the first half in the 12th minute when Marlena Muller saw a shot blocked from outside the area. That is it in terms of attacking output from Leipzig. Leverkusen, they certainly have more chances and better chances in the first half, but they are the side that are closer to breaking the deadlock and the more deserving to. But the onus is on them to make something happen. Leipzig will happily take a nil-nil draw here on home soil against a team above them in the standings in the Frauen Bundesliga this season. A little too physical, the challenge from Lara Marti against Johansson, her former teammate. We just had the announcement we've had an official attendance of 1,042 fans here at Kotovig, but it's actually not that often that Leipzig break the thousand mark in terms of their attendance, so worth taking note of. of the popularity this team have garnered in a short space of time. Their rise to the top of the women's game, more organic than the equivalent rise of the men's team. Still, they catch a bit of a bad rep, given the fact that the club are seen as a marketing construct. In a culture of German football where tradition is valued above all else. That's a nice little banner there, Zabun. Stay one of us forever. Unfortunately, that's not the case. He's leaving in the summer. But he wants to leave, having secured Leipzig's top flight status, and arguably he'd prefer to do that with a bit of a cushion as well to underline how well they've done in their first season. They were expected to be in the thick of the dance with demotion but they've won the big games they've needed to against their direct competitors and as a result while they are still in the mix they are without question the favorites to keep their heads above water if anything Köln are more at risk of getting dragged back in by Nuremberg if anything Köln will be wanting Leipzig to do them a favour next weekend on match day 20 and take points off of Nuremberg. going long but easily dealt with by Emilia Brogstad. We admitted in an interview that if she wasn't a footballer she might have turned her talents towards police work and given her stature I tell you what she would not be a policewoman you want to mess with on the streets of Norway. Like the Hamstertier, Brogstad on loan from Bayern. I have the feeling that Bayern will be very impressed with her appearances at centre back for Leverkusen this season. She really has taken a step forward in her development, been a commanding presence and a leading figure at the back for Leverkusen. That's a nice flick on and Labels. Oh, does well to get there. Janu Labels. Lovely play by Labels, but the pass just let her down at the vital moment. Did everything right, all the hard work, rode the challenges, spotted the opportunity, worked the space. The 
the pass to Verena Vida. Didn't match the work done before it. Pounced upon in midfield by Stebel, but then her loose touch lets her down. Brookstad again. Stepping out this time on Mimi Larson. She certainly had the better of the head-to-head -head battle in the second half, Amelia Brookstad. She's kept her run going here. Fancied a maraud forward as an auxiliary striker and an extra number. I think now that the throw-in has been conceded, she's actually retreated her lines. Yeah, she has, the young Norwegian. But thinking about her prospects of breaking into the Bayern team, they're certainly a little bit more promising than those of Carolina Verhalmstadt here, simply based on the fact that she doesn't have as much competition for places. Linda Zembrandt on loan from Juventus. Bayern might think better of not making her deal permanent, but instead letting Emilia Brogstad come back to the club and be the deputy behind Glorious Vigostatia and Magdalena Eriksson. Oh, what a Scandinavian trio that would be at the back for Bayern. Got to think Bayern with one hand and a fair few fingertips firmly on the Meister Charlotte. The question is, how are they going to strengthen in the summer? They're going to invest in the club again, without question, because they want to make a run at the Champions League. And they could clinch the club's first ever domestic double this season, as we see Michaela Croato brought on late on for Barbara Brecht. Couldn't add to the goal that she scored last time out, which was her first of the season in that one or draw with Vera Bremen. But goal-scoring chances tonight for Leipzig have been at the ultimate premium. One chance is all it takes, though. Just under 15 minutes of normal time remaining. Leipzig, if they get that chance and score it, it'll be the ultimate surprise. Leverkusen. Just short of the reward of an opener here. Otherwise, you can really point to every aspect of their performance as being quite proficient. Oof. That was a generous decision going the way of Vanessa Fudala. Kurgle knows it, and I think she's annoyed simply based on how promising the position is as well. Kurgle's actually making the point, I was clean down the wing if you'd let me go. Let's take a look at this again. No, that's a clean challenge, Kurgle does really well. Don't get me wrong, there's contact with Fudala. But for me, Kurgle does incredibly well there to wrap her foot around the ball and get the touch to take it away from Fodala. Oh, oh, that. But one word too many, she goes into the referee's books, but sometimes I think the players are happy to accept a booking just to vent their frustrations in a situation like that. We'll have to watch her step for the final 10 minutes and change. But now, having fashioned no goal-scoring chances from open play, a chance from a set-piece for Leipzig, for Dala to deliver. Oh, there wasn't a lot of pace on that delivery. It made it easy to defend. Muller. She can't pick out a teammate with her cross. They will get a throw-in in an advanced area here, the home side. Five times they've blanked this season, Leipzig. Three times on home soil. Once against Wolfsburg, once against Bayern, and once against Werder Bremen. Goal scoring at one point was an issue for them as we take a look at the match statistics again. Underlining that Leverkusen are on top in all departments, but admittedly in this second half, the attacking guile they had in the first half hasn't quite been as prominent. And you can maybe say that Leipzig have defended in a more disciplined manner in the second half, and that has neutralised Leverkusen's threat a little bit more than in the first half. But really, again, the onus is on Leverkusen as the favourites, looking to build on that magnificent 2-0 win against Eintracht Frankfurt last time out, to push on and get another positive result and take another three points. Better their season tally from last season in terms of the points return. And instead, they're being frustrated. And again, this is a performance on the back of a 
big win against Frankfurt that maybe suggested, hey, this is a team that can compete for a top three finish at some point in the near future. This is a performance that suggests that they are still a step short of Hoffenheim, of Frankfurt, and of course of the duopoly that are dominating German women's football with Bayern and Wolfsburg. Lovely play by Johansson. Can she make something happen? Trying to pick up Leibels. Oh, it's brilliant. But Leibels gets the volley all wrong. I'm not sure she had many other options than taking it first time there, Janu Levels. Awkward height, awkward distance, a degree of difficulty. And it will go down as another half chance for Leverkusen in this second half. And in the first half, they had clear cut chances. Forcing Herzog into saves from Sophie Stebel and Carolina Ziems. Best chance of the lot, Lila Tarani, unmarked, two yards out from goal, from a corner kick, planting a header towards goal, but over the bar. Just got under the ball at the vital moment. And the chance for Carolina Zims was also of a golden variety as well. Now Mimi Larsen. A one-on-one -on -one with Brugstad, but the Norwegian there. Lovely defending, and what an outlet pass. That is the spin of the ball combined with a slick pitch. Oh, that looked like a foul throw from Kirsten Kirgel. Well, they're punished. The karma bites them anyways. It's given away cheaply. And then Sandra Starker does Leverkusen a favour by giving the ball straight to Elisa Zenz. Zenz, well, she had onto the ball just a touch too long there. And as a result, it goes back and forth in midfield once again. And the question really now, with less than 10 minutes on the clock, are either side really going to throw caution to the wind here? And take the risks needed to win this game. Leipzig will be not just based on the status of favourites and underdogs tonight, but on the context of play, will be the much happier with a point here. Janu Levels again, on the run, closed down by Lara Marti, her former Leverkusen teammate. Marti to ground. Lovely challenge. No goal kick, no corner. And a round of applause rightly received by Lara Marti, but Fidala just takes the pace out of proceedings there. Some risky passes across the back line from Leipzig, but Leverkusen and their Gegen press not quite as intense as it was in the first half. And Larsen's in a lot of space out wide on the right here. Tarani has to cover. Mimi Larsen. Still Mimi Larsen. Mimi Larsen! And just like that, Leipzig land the lucky punch with their first real chance of the game. 83 minutes played. And Mimi Larsen. Punishing Leverkusen. Delight for those at Kotovic. And it's a late, late goal that might just be securing Leipzig their top tier status for another season with three games to play. A lovely finish from Mimi Larsen, but Tarani and Brugstad have to do better. Two for company. She finds the bottom corner. Mimi Larson's second goal of her Leipzig career. But if it's the one that wins in the game tonight, it'll be the most important. And Leverkusen now will be lamenting the missed chances. They were the side that deserved all three points here. But football is a funny, fickle old game and not always is it the best team that takes home the spoils. Robert DePau. A penny for his thoughts. But in many regards, I think he'll be the first to admit that his side only have themselves to blame. Not just for the chances they've missed, but genuinely for the fact that they did not make life more difficult there for Mimi Larson. She grabbed the all-important opening goal, just like Leipzig did on match day eight. On that occasion, it was Vanessa Fadala in the 78th minute. This time, Mimi Larsen in the 83rd as Fadala. Chances are on from range with no luck. And there was a last gasp equaliser back in the first half of the season. Verena Vida and that wonderful bicycle kick of hers. Could history repeat itself here at Kotovig? this would be for Leipzig though. 
just adding to that incredible run they've had in the Rook Runda. And don't get me wrong, an eight-point gap above Nuremberg with nine left to play for. Mathematically, it's not secure. But if we're realistic, Leipzig will be in the Frauen Bundesliga again next season if they hold on to this 1-0 win. And that'll even be before that meeting on match day 20 with Nuremberg. Can then maybe ask the question, is that the perfect time for Nuremberg to face Leipzig? Could Leipzig maybe just take their eye off the ball? When you've had a couple of games in a row now where in terms of attacking output, they've really struggled. Don't get me wrong, they've got the goal here through Mimi Larsen with one of their two shots on goal. Their first shot on target, Friederica Raypol. Finally beaten. Maybe beaten here again, Marlena Muller! This time Raypol with the save. Four hundred and fifty eight minutes Ray Paul had gone without conceding. Four straight clean sheets. And that, having conceded once, is now her first save of the game. So in the eighty third minute she conceded, in the eighty sixth her first save. And that's a dangerous corner. Deep it goes and over everyone. Tell you what, even if we look at the performance over the context of the 490 minutes and say, right, Leipzig have not been at their best tonight, they'll admit that themselves. But if they're going to be efficient and still manage to get a win in a game like this, it really does send a message of intent for next season in particular. I mean, the Frauen Bundesliga really needs to sit up, take notice, and be warned. Because if Leipzig do the right work in the summer, they don't rock the boat too much. They'll make investment. They just need to find the right balance and not overdo it. Because they do have a good thing going here. And you look at their results in the Rook Runda, and they are nothing short of remarkable. If it stays this way at 1-0, only Wolfsburg, Hoffenheim and Bayern will have picked up more points in the second half of the season. And actually, it's actually only Hoffenheim and Bayern right now. Wolfsburg would have to pick up points against Duisburg, which you'd expect them to do. There's Mimi Larson, the goal scorer. Cross block behind for a corner. She has been one of the reasons as well, let's be honest, that Leipzig have been so much better in the Rookrunder. She has brought a wealth of experience to the table, the former Swedish international. Eight appearances two goals one came in the four all draw with Essen what a thrilling game that was tonight it might be the winning goal from Mimi Larson but she has allowed Vanessa Fadala to tap into more of her talents she's been a key pivot up front and clearly an impressive presence as a character amongst the Leipzig squad who are unproven at this level but Mimi Larson has given them that experience up front that maybe they were lacking in the Hinrunde. Two goals in eight appearances, not the best output, but her impact, when you look at Leipzig's performance, is undeniable. Leverkusen out there against Mataschik, no foul. Leverkusen needing the ball at the other end of the pitch. Tarani went for the no-nonsense clearance, but botched it. Marina Vida trying to gain some purchase here for Leverkusen, but again, her pass is there, and she's going to try and pick up the pieces, loses out again. And as so often in this second half, Leverkusen's attacking movements falling a little bit flat. Elvira Hetzog hasn't had to make a save in the second half that's really troubled her.
14 points from a possible 24 in the second half of the season for Leipzig. That would be 14 of their 20 points amassed all season have come in the second half of the season. We see Nina Reker is going to come on for the final few exchanges here as we see three minutes of time added on. I don't know whether that's an omen given the fact that Verena Vida scored 93rd minute when these two sides met in the first half of the season. It's Mimi Larson coming off to a rousing reception. She right now is the match winner, has had little to no service to work with. This goal all of her own making as she tucked it into the bottom corner, showing off all of the goal scoring prowess she has fashioned over an illustrious career. Oh. Striking what could be a decisive winner. Leipzig again. A win here means they would have suffered just two losses in their last eight league games. And those two losses would have come against Wolfsburg and Bayern. They go through all of next season just losing to Wolfsburg and Bayern. They'll be knocking on the door of a top three finish. And their performances as well. This will be another factor. Will be a huge magnet for new players as well. Proof of how promising this project is. And then the question is, can you convince players to come on board and be part of this project? Can they add quality in their ranks? Zabat Uzen set to leave as head coach in the summer after two years with the club where he's delivered them promotion into the Frauen Bundesliga and is now going to deliver them survival in their debut season. The debut season to remember. He calls it a unique club was proud of breaking the record in the first season and reaching the DFB Pokal der Frauen semi-finals. He might have been more proud of this second season before he leaves on what will be the ultimate high note. But how high could it be, I guess, is the question now. Because as things stand, they'll be in ninth place, one point behind Freiburg. Freiburg in action later this weekend on foreign soil against Köln on Sunday. That not a foregone conclusion with Köln scrapping for their lives as well. So there's a chance that Leipzig could claw back Freiburg and maybe even finish outside the bottom four, which would be nothing short of remarkable. Leverkusen, though, we are in last chance saloon. If they want to build on that 2-0 win against Frankfurt, something needs to happen now. Marina Gonzalez. Oh, she chances her arm! And Herzog saw it the whole way. But given the lack of chances in the second half. You can't really blame the young striker there. Estrella Marino Gonzalez. German youth international with Spanish roots. And that, I think, might be that for tonight. It has poured all night long, but no one is raining on Leipzig's parade. Leipzig's on fire is the chance, and that is exactly what the newly promoted side are right now. Four straight wins on home soil, three more precious points that has all but secured their survival and their top tier status for another season. And look at what the result means for them. Eight points clear of Nuremberg in the bottom two with just three games left to play. They face Nuremberg next to really seal their fate. But this is a famous win on home soil. Up there with the defeat of Eintracht Frankfurt. Mimi Larsen, the only goal scorer of the game as Leipzig make it four straight home wins with a 1-0 win against Leverkusen. Well, a remarkable turn of events here. Bayer Leverkusen with all the chances. And then Leipzig landing the lucky punch through Mimi Larsen's second goal of the season. Herzog played her part with a string of fine saves in the first half. 
had little to do in the second, admittedly, because Leverkusen's attacking threat diminished after the break. But in tricky conditions, it was Leipzig who dug deeper, never gave up the belief that they could take all three points. And in the end, Zabon Uzen, seeing his side exercise maybe demons from their result against Leverkusen in the first half of the season, where they had a late lead from Hudessa Fudala and then conceded in the 93rd minute to be denied all three points. Tonight, they were not denied. Their attacking output was not able to match that of Leverkusen, but they scored the decisive goal. And in their debut season in the Frauen Bundesliga, they have amassed 20 points through 19 games played, which is a remarkable result. Eight points is the cushion now between them and the bottom two. Next weekend, Match day 20, they can seal their fate and secure their top tier status. But tonight has all but done that. For Leverkusen, disappointment. Robert De Powell wanting his side to build on the Eintracht Frankfurt win, but saw them profligate in front of goal and punished at the other end. The final score here, James Sargon, your match commentator. A pleasure to have you join me. But the final score is Leipzig 1, Leverkusen 0. Zone is the global home of women's football. History is to be written in the women's game tonight. Enjoy the best live games from the world's top leagues. A new deal for women's football. Sign up now for free at DAZN.com. Live on DAZN Worldwide, April 20th, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. Two generational talents, the world at their feet. It's time for me to show the world how great I really am. A world championship is on the line. This is the year I shocked the world, but only one can win the crown. Let's make the fight happen now. This is a grudge match. This one counts. Live on DAZN Worldwide, April 20th. Buy now at DACN.com. We're going to see some fireworks tonight. Welcome to the National Football League Draft. I can't wait to see how this plays out. It's time to get the show started. I know why you're here. You're a born winner, the top dog. You have a proper punch on you. It only takes one, eh? But I know you're not all about throwing haymakers. You know your bobs from your weaves, and you know the zone's got over 100 live events every year. Over 100, proper stack. All the action, the chaos, the comebacks, the non-stop knockout. Big fights every week. So get those gloves back on. Together, we're boxing royalty. The zone, undisputed. 